Uh, hello, welcome to my latest demo for the Filecoin virtual machine. This one is a bounty actor. Um, this is a very simplistic version of one. And uh, I'll give you just scroll through and you'll be able to see what it does. Um, so this is uh, implemented as a uh, JavaScript notebook on observable HQ. Um, but behind it is spun up dynamically a uh, Filecoin local net. Um, it, using pre-release code that with the Filecoin virtual machine, which you can install actors into and um, in, interact with it. So so here's the, I'm not gonna read everything on the page, um, but what it's doing is it's creating um, two client side um, uh, accounts. Uh, one is Alice and one is Bob. So Alice is going to post bounties and Bob is going to store files. And if he stores the files, uh, he will get the, he'll be able to retrieve, get the funds for the bounties. So, okay, so um, when you spin it up, it'll spin up a, a Filecoin blockchain just uh, on demand. It'll uh, tear down after three minutes of inactivity. Um, so the, what the notebook does is when it starts up, It'll give Alice a hundred file coin and Bob a hundred file coin, um, and th the uh, the Rust source code for the uh, actor is uh, here, so you can scroll down. You can even modify it if you want, um, and you can see there's the constructor um, and a number of different methods. So, like there's a method to post bounties, there's a method to list the bounties, there's a method to look up an individual bounty. And also the, the final method is to award a bounty. So I'm going there. So be, because you can't build the Rust in the web browser itself, I've, I've implemented a web server which uh, has the Rust compiler. So you can just click the compile to WASM and it takes 30 to 60 seconds. So I just have to sit here and wait. It's a bit of waiting in this demo, so. Hopefully it doesn't take too, too long. Okay, so it took 55 seconds, which is I think pretty average for running from a cold start. Um, so I have the um, WASM bundle. I can download it locally if I wanted to uh, install it somewhere else other than the demo, but um, you don't have to. Um, you, you can just scroll down here. So you can see here this height is increasing. So that just means that the, the local Lotus blockchain is running. And um, so I click this install the actor code. Um, button and this is similar to the previous demos I've done. Um, so you just have to wait for that message to be sent and then wait for it to be executed in a block. And then the 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 Wasm bundle will be uh, in the be recorded into the Filecoin blockchain that's running. Okay. So the, the code is installed into Filecoin now. Um, so now I want to create an, an actor instance for the bounty actor. So I'll just call this the bounty actor. And um, this is pretty much the same as my previous demos, except I'm passing an additional param to, to it. Uh, I, have to, I want to pass it a trusted address because I'm going to have a service that's running that will award the bounties. So, and I don't want just anybody to call that that particular method, only the trusted address. And um, that's just my default wallet address for, for Lotus. So um, so it's it's installed it and this is the ID address. So T0-1007 is my bounty actor. Now I can, um, now this, this demo is all about storing files. I need some content for the files. I just generated uh, 10 different random uh, phrases um, just 
random things. And I also calculate the PCID, which is uh, what um, is recorded into the, the sectors that, that are stored in Cloudcoin uh, that represent the uh, the content of the, the that particular file or group of directories or anything represented by a CID. Um, so these are these are really small. Um, uh, I actually had to pad some spaces on them to fit them, uh, make them large enough uh, to there's a minimum size that has to be I think 256 bytes and or maximum size is 2K in sector with this uh, particular local net. So you can't put big files into it. So okay, we've we've got these files. Um, and I've got the PC IDs from them. I could, I tried to calculate these client side in JavaScript, but I found it, the I couldn't really get the JavaScript libraries to work um, in the web browser. So instead, um, I'm I just actually uploaded these to Lotus and used that to calculate the PC ID. Um, okay, so now that we have the files and these have not been stored into Filecoin yet, so. Um, now it's Alice can decide, oh, Alice wants to pay a bounty to if anybody will store these files matching a certain criteria. So I'll just do the first one here. Asymmetric peer ID is the content and desired provider. I'll just pick the first one here and one file coin. If somebody stores it, they'll get one file coin. So I'll post the bounty and it's, you send the message and then you wait. Okay, so um, it's been executed. So you can see the bounty actor, which is T0-1007, um, now has a balance of one, because Alice has already paid the funds for, for the bounty, and the bounty actor is acting as the custodian for those. So you see Alice's account went down. And Bob, and it also went down because of gas fees, so it's not a round number, and Bob, just to make things faster, has transferred some funds to his market actor uh, market balance, so the 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 deals will proceed faster. Okay, so so these are so you can see here um, this is the available bounties that have been posted. Um, but let's do another one just to make it more interesting. So let's do the next one and do a different. Well, we want to pay for it to be on a different provider, and I'll just. Uh, do a different uh, reward just so that it stands out. Now I'll just wait again. Okay. So you now see the bounty actor has three file coin because it has that first bounty and the second bounty it was for two two file coin. Um, and uh, Alice has lower balance because she's paid the money to the bounty actor, and Bob's just got what he started with. So here's the two available bounties. Now Bob wants to get the money for the bounty. So the way he gets the money is he he gets a list of bounties here and he chooses one. Let's do the, the two file coin that pays more. Um, and he, he'll get paid if he stores this content with that PCID um, onto this uh, provider or miner using this with this miner ID. So if I make a deal and um, you can see this is this is the client view. Um, he, he's made um, this deal. And uh, the deal is just checking constantly what the status is. So it's already sent the file to the to the miner, and the miner is like, okay, am I going to accept this or not? When the miner is accepts it, they'll publish the deal onto Filecoin blockchain. Um, now, Bob doesn't see this, but there is an off-chain service which is implemented in this notebook, but it would normally be standalone running on a server. That's just watching every single deal that happens that's being published. And when it sees one that matches, um, it will look at who made, the, who made the deal and then 
it will call the um, this, the um, actor with a method to say uh, pay out the bounty. So it just it just noticed the deal here. So it takes a, a minute or so, um, and so it, it has a deal ID and client. Uh, which just happens to be Bob, is uh, T0-1006, uh, made a deal to put this this uh, PC ID, which has this phrase in it, onto this provider. And that matches the bounty, of course. So what this what this what what the service code does is it recognizes that and uh, it calls back to the actor and uh, pays out the bounty. So he, and the JavaScript just re records that transaction here. So at this time, this piece ID um, paid two Filecoin for that phrase. And so if we, if we scroll down here, like we, we can see the awarded bounties. Uh, there's still that, that first one that we made hasn't been, um, there's been no deals for it yet. So it's still available, but it's deleted the one that Bob just made. And you can see the balances. So the bounty actor balance is now only one because there's only one bounty left. And, but Bob has just made two file coin on the deal. And Alice, she, she paid that money before. So she's just where she was at before. So to complete it, let's just do, do the other deal here. So, and just um, everything takes a little while. So you have to wait for things to happen. Um, I've configured the miners in this demo to not wait. Um, uh, normally, a Falcon miner will wait an hour, so it'll try to put several um, storage deals together before it publishes a message, but that's just too long to wait for the demo, so I shortened that time. Um, this, this deal ID on the client side sometimes takes a while to get updated or to get updated at all, so it's better to just watch the deals ob observed by the service here. And uh, pretty soon we should have deal ID three pop up. Okay, so the deal ID it was popped up, and then uh, um, it was paid out here. Asymmetric peer ID, one file coin. So if you scroll down here. Um, The, the message has been posted, but it might take a yeah. So it takes a second for it to actually be executed in the block. So so now you can see that these two. Oh, uh, this is just client side. Uh, the the bounties have been awarded, but when it when you call out to the method to list the bounties, there are none because they've all been paid out. Bounty actor now has zero in it, um, and Bob's got all the money. So um, so this is just there's quite a lot of work to get this all together. Um, but it, I feel like this is a full circle demo, like, like it's uh, fully ex executing um, all the things you'd want to do to build things like a data DAO. And um, you can take take a look at the code that's in the, the Rust actor, as well as the JavaScript and um, the, the Docker images that I've created. Um, and this should, it should be a good starting point to build uh, more complex, more realistic sort of things. So, so like a real bounty actor um, features I would like to see in it would be, um, say you post a bounty and nobody um, execute or executes the the bounty. You would like to get the money back, you know, after a certain time uh, period of time, like you say, or you might want to be able to have the ability to revoke a bounty. Um, you know, you might have a situation where uh, multiple clients are um, racing each other to try to get a, a bounty. So you might want to have like some sort of like a re uh, reservation type system, like say, or a locking system so that um, multiple people aren't storing the same file. Um, and there's a whole bunch of, bunch of things that could be added to this to make this realistic. So, um, so that's my demo. Um, uh, Try it out, and I'll, I'll post the link, um, and it, it should just work. Okay, thanks.